If you live on Earth, then you've probably had to take an English class, and the majority of those people who've taken an English class have done so to learn English as a foreign language. Because English is THE de facto international language in this timeline, which is too bad, because English is really hard, actually. Now, I'm not trying to tell everyone to stop using English as an international language or anything, I know one YouTube video isn't going to change all that, my 50k YouTube subscribers haven't given me a god complex yet, nor am I saying that English is any harder than most other languages. But I wanted to make this video to help English native speakers empathise with English learners, and maybe help them understand why people of different linguistic backgrounds can sound so weird when speaking the language so many people in this world take for granted. First of all, do you know how hard English is to pronounce? Seriously, let's start with the dental fricatives. Those sounds with the tongue on the teeth. I'm pretty sure there's like, not a single other language in the world that has these sounds. Okay, actually they appear in quite a lot of languages, but they're still pretty rare overall. Speakers of, for example, German or Dutch are likely to replace this phone with T or S, and the German use of S and Z instead of these is where this accent with these sounds comes from. I mean, these sounds are so stupid that even those who use English every day don't want to pronounce them. In the UK, 12% of native speakers use F instead of TH, and in some places, like India, the dental fricatives are practically non-existent. Which makes sense, because they simply don't occur in most major languages on the Indian subcontinent. For that matter, they're not in French, Russian, Japanese, Persian, they're not in Mandarin Chinese. And speaking of, you know what else doesn't appear in Mandarin Chinese? V. That's why you can sometimes hear Chinese people saying things like vague instead of vague, or find learners mixing up when to use v or w, and all these stupid vowels. I mean, you're telling me it and eat are completely different words? Do you realise how ridiculous that sounds? Z, ch, j, sh, z. For Chinese people, all these sounds have to be learned or substituted with something that's easier for them to say. But to many learners of English, this is nowhere near the hardest thing about its pronunciation. Because even once you've got your head around all these phonemes, you still have to put them together into syllables. Let's take a nice, normal, easy language like Jap- <laughs> Like- like Japanese! I'm simplifying here, but we could say the maximal syllable structure in Japanese is CVN. This means that the most complicated a single syllable can get is a consonant followed by a vowel and then a nasal coda, like in San or hong. A lot of Polynesian languages have similarly restrictive phonotactics. Hawaiian syllables, for instance, can only go up to CVV, with the most complicated syllables being a consonant followed by a long vowel or diphthong. Do you know what the maximal syllable structure of English is? I'm not sure you want to know. It's disgusting. This here is a representation of the word strengths. This is the extreme case, but in general, English throws consonants together like a toddler playing with Legos, and that makes it really hard to pronounce for some people. That's where your stereotypical Japanese accent comes from, with a word like break, which ends in a non-nasal consonant, remember, being broken down into bu, re, ku. The English language actually also has some pretty difficult grammar. An example of this is the phrase, an example of this, or the phrase, the English language. What's the point of these words here? These are articles, words which mark identifiability, whether the referent of the noun can be identified in a given context or not. But like, what that actually means is kind of unclear. Like, it's even debated among linguists. And if someone said, English language has hard grammar, example of this is, you'd still get what they meant. You'd just think they were from, perhaps, Russia. Because see, most of the Slavic languages, though in the wider scheme of things pretty closely related to English, don't have articles. This leads to speakers of languages like Russian or Ukrainian either just forgetting to use the or a when they have to, or mixing up which one they should be using in a certain context. Even in a sample of essays written by Russian university students of English, over 15% of all instances of the word the were incorrect. It's hard. And you know what else is hard? The English tense system. Speakers of Swedish, French, and German, who all have just one present tense in their native languages, can't always know when to use I do or I am doing, especially when that second construction can sometimes seemingly randomly be used for the future as well. And sure, Italian and Spanish verbs have these two present tenses too, and are generally harder, but English is no saint either. Look at the present perfect, present perfect continuous, past, past perfect, past perfect continuous, and past continuous, along with all these random constructions you just have to learn when to use. And speaking of these random constructions, what's up with that whole 
do plus a verb thing. You know, like, I do go, the emphatic present, sometimes called a third present tense. It's kind of a cool little feature, isn't it? Being able to emphasize that you really do think something contrary to what others might believe. But then, suddenly in the negative, it's compulsory? Unlike normal Indo-European languages where you add a negative particle like non, nicht, or nahi, in English, you add the verb to do, bang on an nt to the end of that, and put the original verb in the infinitive? Thereby, she doesn't speak, rather than the much more logical, she speaks not. And then to complicate things further, some verbs don't get negated like this. I mustn't, I'm not, he isn't, I won't, I can't. It's kind of ridiculous. And then the verb to have takes a don't negation when it's used on its own, like I don't have a pen, but a not negation when it's an auxiliary, like in I haven't got a pen. The thing is, that's not even the worst of the tense system. The worst thing about our tenses is, the fact that we have tenses. Bringing this back full circle to speakers of Mandarin Chinese, some languages simply don't change their verbs based on when the action took place, and it can be harder for speakers of those languages to use tense properly. I mean, to be fair, if you've already specified that you did something yesterday, it can feel a bit pointless to have to do all this conjugation business. Yesterday I went to the village, and yesterday I go to the village aren't any different in the information they convey. Get rid of the article, since Chinese doesn't have those either, and replace v with w, and you get yesterday I go to village. The stereotype of Chinese people speaking English. I really don't want to give the impression that these features of English are bad. Articles and tenses are useful, a unique phonology is cool, but to a lot of people these can also be difficult. Learning languages is hard, not just for you, not just for English speakers, for billions of people. So just try to remain conscious of this when interacting with foreigners or anyone learning English. <laughs> conscious. Konskiaus. That's a weirdly spelled word. Actually, what's with four eggners and unique? Hey, I think there's something up with English spelling.